Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Dawn, thank you for visiting with me today. So today we are going to be discussing a case that I think kind of changes or sets a precedent of how we're going to uh, deal with parents of troubled kids or how the legal system is going to deal with parents of troubled kids when parents don't do anything about it. And um, we're going to talk about such a case today and that is the um, Oxford High School shooting. And I am gonna be referring to my notes because I, did, I wrote a lot of them. I really did. So Ethan Robert Crumbly was born April 28th, 2006 in Atlantic Beach, Florida. That is actually where I'm from. Um, this is 15 miles east of Jacksonville. Well, technically, unless he was a home birth, he was more than likely born in Jacksonville or Jacksonville Beach because that's where the hospitals with birthing centers are. So unless he was a home birth, it would have had to have been one of those two places. Um, and I lived in Jacksonville Beach for a good bit of my life. Um, I lived in a, when I was a child, I lived in an uncorp unincorporated area so all our mail was addressed to Atlantic Beach and then the Postal Service delivered to a smaller post office in our area anyway that doesn't matter anyway he was born to mother Jennifer and father James Crumley both of his parents had prior criminal records from 1995 to 2005 for DUI and check fraud uh, both worked in business development and marketing before moving to Issaquah, Issaquah, Washington, forgive my pronunciation. A former neighbor they had when they moved to Michigan told the Detroit Free Press that in 2014 and 2015, Jennifer and James would leave their son home alone with no phone while they went bar hopping. So they were out partying while their like eight, nine year old was home completely alone. That's nice. Uh, the neighbor did file a complaint with the state CPS agency, but was unclear whether, whether or not any action was taken. In late, two, in late 2021, Ethan started to become depressed. Uh, he started sending his mom texts claiming that there were demons and ghosts inside the home. That would have been a red flag for me to get my child help, but we're not all alike, I guess. Um, he also allegedly videotaped himself torturing animals and drew a picture of himself committing a school shooting. Um, he also allegedly brought a head of a dead bird in the, into the school. Um, his, his parents never got him any therapy and he even directly, he directly asked for help on more than one occasion. And in one disturbing picture he drew of a school massacre, he wrote, help me on it. Um, according to police, Ethan hadn't faced any discipli disciplinary issues at school, but on Monday, November 29th, 2021, Ethan had to meet with school officials after a teacher saw him, uh, saw Ethan using his phone to search for ammunition and reported him. Ethan told them he and his mother recently went to a shooting range and that shooting sports is a family hobby, um, so he was kind of just shopping for their hobby. Uh, school officials left a voicemail and sent an email to Ethan's mother. She did not respond, but later texted her son telling him, LOL, I'm not mad at you. You have to learn not to get caught. <sighs> On Tuesday, November 30th, 2021, another meeting with school officials took place after another teacher found a violent drawing on Ethan's desk. Um, I believe it was on his worksheet or his math paper. Um, the teacher took a photo of the drawing and reported Ethan. He was taken to the guidance counselor's office and school staff called Ethan's parents requesting them to come to the school. School officials said they didn't observe behavior from him that indicated he might hurt someone. Um, when his parents arrived, they were shown the drawing and instructed to seek counseling for him within 48 hours or the school would call CPS. So, you know, at this point, they were told, look, you have to seek help for him. The drawn, the description of the drawn was of a semi-automatic handgun pointing at the words, the thoughts won't stop, help me. He wasn't drawing a happy field. In another section, there is a drawing of a bullet with blood everywhere, 
written above the bullets. It said blood everywhere. Um, between the drawing of the gun and bullet is a drawing of a person who appears to have been shot twice and bleeding. Below that figure in a drawing of a laughing emoji. Further down the drawing are the words, my life is useless. And, the, and to the right is the words, the world is dead. During the Crumbly's meeting with school officials, um, the Crumbly's did not agree to bring Ethan home at the time of the meeting. So they left and Ethan returned to class that same morning. At 12.50 p.m. at Oxford High School of Oxford Township, Michigan, Ethan Robert Crumbly, age 15, armed with a nine millimeter semi-automatic handgun purchased by J James Crumbly on Black Friday, and what Jennifer Crumbly referred to as Ethan's new Christmas present, in a social media post started firing, oh, what Jennifer Crumbly referred to as Ethan's new Christmas present in a social media post, started firing in the hallways as hundreds of students passed through. As students began fleeing, he methodically and deliberately walked down the hallway, shooting into classrooms. 400, about 30 miles north of Detroit here. So we'll follow this breaking news wherever it may lead, right here on Live Now from Fox Everyone. But an active investigation uh, going on right now. We don't know if there are any injuries, but really uh, don't know too much information when it comes to this incident here. But uh, the police continue to be at the scene right now. And uh, we will continue to bring you always the very latest right here. Getting another uh, uh, information here from a school district just north of Oxford. Uh, the LaPere schools putting out a tweet saying due to an ongoing security issue at Oxford High School this afternoon and out of an abundance of caution, we have been advised by local law enforcement to place all our buildings in secure mode. There have not been made any threats made to the school here. Okay, so now we're at the scene right here at uh, the high school, and you can see uh, the large presence right now of uh, police ambulances. And uh, look at the scene that you're seeing right here. You got students that are out in the parking lot as well. This is under lockdown right now, and we don't know. Uh, also, this could be maybe parents coming to the scene, even though that they were told not to. Obviously, when something like this happens, you just want to try to get as close as you can to the incident and try to uh, locate your loved one or family member. But uh, we're going to stay on this right here. We are taking out our break, staying in this breaking news mode until we get some more information right here on Live Now from Fox Everyone. But showing you this scene here in Oxford, uh, once again, a high school under lockdown right now uh, for some sort of incident shooting investigation. Uh, we don't know if it happened near the school, on the school property, or in the school at this moment right now. But uh, unfortunately, these types of scenes, uh, just too often we have uh, seen this here in this country where you see helicopter visuals of a uh, massive high school and uh, you see the situation where lots of ambulances, police, sheriff's deputies all coming, SWAT members coming to the scene here, not knowing what they are going to find inside right here. Yeah, bro. He said, no. No. he said bro. He said bro. Red flag. I'm 
A voice over the intercom alerted students and staff that there was an active shooter. Teachers started locking and barricading doors and covering windows. At 12.51 p.m., and there is a little uncertainty on the exact time, so we'll say about 12.51 p.m., police received the first of approximately 100 911 calls. Within three minutes of arrival of first responders, Ethan was arrested by a deputy and a deputy servant as the school's um, resource officer. The entire shooting event lasted about five minutes. 17-year-old Madison Baldwin, 16-year-old Tate Meyer, 14-year-old Hannah St. Juliana were killed at the scene and eight other people, including one teacher, were injured. Tate Meyer reportedly was shot while trying to stop Ethan. He died in a police vehicle on his way to the hospital. On December 1st, 17-year-old Justin Schillen died in the hospital. The evening of the shooting, three of the injured students were in critical condition with one on a ventilator. The injured teacher was treated and discharged. Um, I believe a couple of those hospital stays lasted more than a month after the shooting. Investigators' primary focus was video footage from security cameras at the school. Officials told reporters that it was clear from the footage Ethan had intent to kill other students and aimed for the heads and chest of victims. A search warrant was executed for the Crumbly home. A cell phone, a journal, long guns, and other items were seized. The cell phone had two videos on it, filmed the night before the shooting where he talked about his plans to shoot and kill student, students at school the following day. The journal also detailed that he wanted to shoot up the school. On December 6th, the prosecutor in the case, Karen McDonald, said officials at the high school had legal grounds to search Crumbly's backpack and locker when concerns were raised, but they failed to do so. They had his backpack when he went in to the meeting and when he went back to class, just handed it back to him without looking in it with all with that drawing that he made i would have made the parents take him home i would have said no you have to he's not allowed to be here i would have probably suspended him not as a disciplinary action but as a we're suspending him for a few days and you need to get him help that would have been my move you know at the that at that time charges against school officials were not being ruled out Following public scrutiny, the superintendent of Oxford Community Schools announced that a third-party investigation of the incident would be conducted. The office of the Michigan Attorney General, Dana Nessel, offered to con conduct the investigation, but the district declined that offer. On December 8th, the Attorney General's office announced her office's intent to review the actions taken by the school leading up to the shooting, despite the district turning down her offer. Ethan was arraigned on homicide and attempted homicide charges after his arrest, but he was not immediate, immediately charged as an adult. On December 1st, 1st, 2021, he was charged with terrorism, cause and death, first degree murder, assault with intent to murder, possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony with the possibility of more charges being added. Ethan was charged as an adult and held without bond. He was appointed an attorney by the court after his parents hired lawyers for themselves. They hired attorneys for themselves, but did not bother hiring a lawyer for their son. They did not hire him a lawyer. Ethan had an appointed guardian ad litem, and they asked that he be moved back to the juvenile detention center because Ethan could hear other adults, which violates the statute for minors being held, being held in adult facilities. The request was denied by the judge, but the assistant prosecutor said he would contact Oakland County Jail regarding his proximity to adults. It's important to note that per prosecutors, after the second meeting with school officials, Ethan committed the shooting at 12.15 p.m., or at 12.50 p.m. and at 1.22 p.m., seven minutes after the first news reports came in of a shooting at the school, 
Jennifer Crumbly texted her son, Ethan, don't do it. At 1.37, James Crumley called 911 to report a Sig Sauer SP 2022 handgun as missing and said his son could be the gunman at Oxford High. On January 12, 2022, a plea of not guilty was entered on Ethan's behalf during his arraignment. On January 26, 2022, Ethan announced he would plead insanity via a court filing made by his attorneys. He was ev evaluated by a doctor from the Center for Forensic Psychiatry. On October 24, 2022, Ethan pleaded guilty to all of the charges and withdrew his intent to pursue an insanity defense. On September 29, 2023, Judge Kwame Rowe ruled that Ethan was eligible for a sentence of life without parole. Rowe said that Ethan's youth and difficulties at home were mitigating factors, um, but they did not outweigh the seriousness of his crime. On December 9, 2023, Ethan was sentenced to life without parole. He apologized to the courtroom, and here is his statement. Mr. Crumbly, is there anything you would like to state before I pass sentence? Yes, may, he, may he stand? Yes, you may. Okay. Thank you. you. May proceed. Um, I'd like to thank you for letting me speak, Your Honor. Um, we are all here because of me today, of what I did. My actions were because of what I chose to do. I could not stop myself, but I am the one who led to why we are here today. I do not diminish any ability to anyone who could have stopped me, of any one of a school or parents. They did not know, and I did not tell them what I planned to do, so they are not at fault what I've done. I am a really bad person. I have done terrible things that no one should ever do. I have lied, been not trustworthy. I've hurt many people and that's what I've done and I'm not denying it, but that's not who I plan on to be. Whatever sentence it is, I do plan to be better than I am. I don't know if you believe that, but Records of 15, 20, 25 years can show that it will change because it may not show it now with only two years of records, but I am trying. And all I want is for the people I hurt to just have a final sense of culpability that justice has somewhat been served in any fit capacity that they can recognize it with. Um, any sentence that they ask for, I ask that you do impose it on me because I want them to be happy and I want them to feel secure and safe and I do not want them to worry another day because I really am sorry for what I've done, for what I've taken of them. I cannot give it back, but I can try my best in the future to help other people and that is what I will do. So, thank you, everyone. Thank you. When prosecutor Karen McDonald originally announced charges against Ethan, she told reporters that her office was considering criminal charges against his parents, James and Jennifer, in connection with the shooting. She said responsible gun ownership was crucial to stop tragedies and those who are, who are irresponsible with their firearms should be held accountable. Yeah, they should. On December 3rd, she announced in a press conference that both James and Jennifer Crumbly were being charged with four counts of involuntary manslaughter for their, their failure to secure the gun Ethan used in the shooting. After charges were announced, an alert was issued by state authorities because the Crumblies left the Oxford Township and did not return to meet with their attorneys and turn themselves in. The Oakland County Sheriff's Office said the FBI, the U.S. Marshal Service, and the Oakland County Fugitive Apprehension Team were searching for them. By their 15-year-old, a semi-automatic gun for Christmas, chide him for getting caught by a teacher searching online for ammo, and then, after their boy allegedly commits a gun massacre at his high school, become fugitives themselves after they're charged with manslaughter for the mass murder. We're pretty much finding out that answer tonight. U.S. Marshals now offering a $10,000 reward each to find James and Jennifer Crumbly, parents of Ethan, who is now behind bars. With the latest, here's Josh Einiger.
The bells tolled tonight in Oxford, Michigan, a bedroom community north of Detroit where through candlelight and tears there is anger and a manhunt, not for the teenage shooter in Tuesday's school massacre, but for his parents. If they think they're going to not come with their attorney but going to run, then we're going to remedy that. You are the parents of uh, Ethan Crumley, is that correct? Yeah. Yesterday, they attended their son's virtual arraignment, charged with 24 counts, including first-degree murder and terrorism. Today, law enforcement said James and Jennifer Crumbly became fugitives. The facts of this case are so egregious. Prosecutors have charged the Crumblies with four counts each of involuntary manslaughter, one for each of the children their son allegedly murdered. I'm angry as a mother. I'm angry as the prosecutor. Back on Black Friday, prosecutors say James Crumbly, like so many other parents, took his 15-year-old son holiday shopping, except in this case, he bought him a Sig Sauer 9mm handgun. Prosecutors referenced the shooter's now deleted Instagram posts. Just got my new beauty today, said one. And then, mom and Sunday, testing out his new Christmas present. Back at school Monday, a teacher caught him searching for ammunition on his phone. Administrators called the parents, who didn't respond. Thereafter, Jennifer Crumbly exchanged text messages about the incident with her son on that day, stating, quote, LOL, I'm not mad at you. You have to learn not to get caught. But he got caught again the very next day. Another teacher was alarmed by a picture he drew, including a gun, a bullet, and a person appearing to be shot. Along with the words, the thoughts won't stop. Help me. Blood everywhere. My life is useless. The world is dead. The parents were immediately summoned to the school, but refused to take their son home. Hours later, police say, he gunned down four fellow students. On December, on December 9th, several survivors of the shooting filed $100 million lawsuits against Oxford Community Schools. At least one, saw, one lawsuit alleged the school failed to stop the shooting and ignored warning signs, such as social media posts of threats that were brought to the school's attention. On January 8th, 2022, survivors filed an updated lawsuit with 11 new counts against the named officials. And on March 6th, 2023, a state judge dismissed the lawsuits. So, um, I'm just wondering, and uh, please, if you communicate in the comments, please be kind to each other. Uh, there's enough meanness in the world. Please be kind to each other. There, um, there are a lot of people that think sentencing the parents is overstepping, and um, but most people I have discussed this topic with or have, you know, seen in forums and stuff regarding this topic think that this is the right move. Me personally, I think this is the right move because, um, and I don't think this is necessarily the right move in every case. A young person shoots up a school or does something like this. But there were warning signs. There were red flags waving all over the place about this kid. And they did nothing to get him help. And they left him at that school after looking at that drawing. And they didn't secure that gun. Like with Columbine, the kids got the guns anyway. Um, but... And I do hope, even though he's going to serve life without parole, I do help hope that Ethan is going to get some kind of um, mental therapy because he needs it. Because he's obviously dealing with some serious deep-rooted issues that are going to manifest into physical issues if they're not dealt with. I, you know, I'm not a psychiatrist, but I do know how poor mental health or um, mental illness can affect your physical being. And um, I just hope that he's getting treatment. I actually, in a lot of ways, even though I feel so much for the families and I'm so sad for these victims and I'm, I, there's nothing I can say to change that. But I also feel bad for Ethan because I feel like he was a victim of his parents. He. He should have gotten treatment when he was mentioned in the demons and the ghosts, you know, and, um, 
At one point, he told his father he was feeling depressed and his father told him to suck it up. So he didn't have a chance, not with those parents. And they're right where they belong in prison for 10 to 15 years. I think that that was a fair sentence for them because I do think they're responsible. I don't think that's the case in every situation, but parents need to start being held responsible for the actions of their children when what they did or their failure to do something, their actions or inactions cause or assisted in causing the damage your child did. And that's just what I believe. And um, you absolutely do not have to agree with me. Again, if you disagree with me, do it kindly. Because we all have opinions and we're all entitled to our opinions. And if your opinion is presented to me kindly and intelligently, you may even make an impact because uh, I've had my opinion changed by other people telling me you know how they feel about certain situations because I was totally 100% pro gypsy until until people started explaining to me why I shouldn't be they weren't telling me oh you're stupid you shouldn't be a supporter of hers it wasn't like that it was well you have a kind heart and I understand what you're saying but and then they told me how they feel and then I'm like you know what that makes a lot of sense and I'm going to study more on this so uh there is a appropriate way to discuss things and please uh, just be nice to each other in the comments the world is crappy enough as it is and um we need to improve as a human race and let's start right here right here under this video okay well, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something. Um, if you have anything to bring to the table, please bring it. And I will talk to everyone later. Bye.